I'm talking with Knut Frostad, who is the CEO and president of Navico, which includes a range of brands which are across the marine industry. Now, first of all, Knut, how did you first start getting involved in sailing itself? Well, I started sailing when I was a kid. Uh, and, and In fact, I started sailing because I had hay fever. <laughs> so I ended up on a on an old wooden uh, sailboat when I was eight, nine years old, and they had a windsurfer. And uh, yeah, that got me on the water and I got hooked on racing. Uh, and that took me to Olympics twice, and, and then I started professional racing. So uh, no, I've been connected to the sea and boats my whole life. And your professional sailing has taken you offshore a lot, um, including the Whitbread and Volvo Ocean Race. Um, what was that like to take part in? Uh, for me, that was the, uh, it was my ultimate dream when I grew up. It was kind of what uh, everyone dreamt of. You know, it was really the Mount Everest in, in sailing, and, and uh, it uh, it just happened to me that I could see it close because there was a boat in Scandinavia that I followed, and I got to know some people. So when I finished my Olympic career, that was my absolute determined next step. So I spent uh, one year trying to qualify myself to get on board one of those boats in back in '92. And, uh, and I managed to do the first race as a crew, and then uh, I realized that this was my this was the angle of sailing that I enjoyed the most. So um, so I spent quite a few years racing around the world again and again in uh, other ocean races, and uh, and I I really enjoy the people side of being a group of people that have to achieve a lot, and you get to do a lot of sailing. I mean. Uh, a lot of sailing in, in racing world today is a lot of preparations and very few hours actually out there racing. While in the World Ocean Race or the Whitbread, you, you really race non-stop for a huge amount of hours. Uh, so so uh, if you have a huge appetite for sailing, it's the best thing you can do. And in parallel with your sailing, you've had your business career and this has included running the Volvo Ocean Race itself. Um, yeah. That must have been a huge experience, but one where having taken part, you must have known it inside out yeah and it's uh, the business side of, of the sport has always been attractive to me so I I had decided very early on I took my MBA and in, uh, in, in the business school and went on a scholarship uh, for sports I was very fortunate to do that when I did my Olympic campaigns and I always really enjoyed the, the links between sailing and business uh, you know there's a huge amount of executives in the business world who like sailing and it's not necessarily because they just like to be out there on the water, it's because the parallels between being a skipper, making decisions, organizing your team in the organization, the tactical side, the whole financial side, everything is very much like running a company. And, and on a very high level, it's, I mean, you're playing chess when it comes to the decision making. And I always, but people ask me who don't know what sailing is about, and I say, well, it's decision making. That's what it boils down to. In a small regatta with dinghies, you make uh, hundreds of decisions during two hours. Uh, going left, going right, what kind of trims you're doing. Much more than any other sport I know. And I think that attracts the business people. And I, for me, that business leg, I started very young with uh, sponsorship. Uh, so I, I managed to fund my own Olympic campaigns with sponsorship. And then I went into bigger boats uh, and funded my own Volvo and Whitbread campaigns. And then... Uh, I also started doing some uh, board, uh, board roles uh, for different companies and uh, in particular for Altor who contacted me back in 2005 who acquired Simrad and B&G to, to jump on board with them as, uh, as a board member and um, I stayed with Navico ever since then until today. So uh, it's kind of a dream for me to, to now be able to work full time in Navico and uh, have one foot in the very passionate part I have for boating and then one foot in the business side. And it is a brand you have been involved with for 14 years now. Yes. And the B&G instrumentation you've been using in the various boats you've been sailing. So this isn't just a company where you have an interest. It is something that you are just completely embedded in. I'm very embedded. I, I, I say to my, I think apparently in Navico, I'm the one that has the most nautical miles behind our instruments. So not only B&G, but I actually also, every time I raced around the world, I had the radars from Simrad. So I, I even worked with Simrad very early on, uh, before I joined the board actually, before we acquired Simrad. I worked on developing the radar we had back in the Whitbread days. Uh, so I think I have more than 300,000 nautical miles uh, behind our instruments. So yeah, very few have pushed uh, screens and the buttons more than I've done. 
Uh, which I think it matters because in the end our customers are extremely passionate about what they're doing, you know, and, and you need to kind of meet them. And for me it has been very easy to also include fishing in is my passion because I, first of all I had the pleasure of, of sitting on the board with Daryl Lawrence ever since we acquired Lawrence uh, and got to learn a lot of things from him about how fishing is organized in the US and why people are passionate about it and then ever since I started now working in Navico I've been focusing on getting to know all the passionate fishing guys we have in the company and you discover that the passion is the same whether you're sailing or fishing it's it's the same things that drives you it's a competition it's uh, the thrill of achieving something whether it's actually sailing very fast or pulling up a very big fish it's the same thing and one of the best things about having this group of, of brands yep. is they are actually have core areas which are the same and so you can cr cross fertilize ideas that come from one sector yep. and utilize them in other areas of the business and that must be a huge advantage it is a big advantage we have a very very specific brand strategy in, in Navico which I was part of forming when we started the company and that's that we want to be the best in each of those three categories sailing sport fishing or power boating and offshore fishing you know so we have one brand for each well, our competitors really play with one brand across. And I always say that uh, we want to be even more specialized in the future because you know, I will never go to my B&G sailors and tell them, hey, we have a fishing feature on your B&G instrument, right? Because fishing, you know, we are out sailing. And the same, I will never tell the Lorenz angler uh, who is competing for f the biggest bass fish that we have a sailing feature on his instruments. But that's what our competitor is doing. So, so we want to really focus even stronger on that going in the future and to be able to differentiate where it's needed and still cooperate where we can get benefits from it is a fantastic strength for us really really big strength and the latest acquisition cmap yep. it really is something that is usable across the rest of the brands yes cmap is where i see probably our biggest growth in percentage uh, the next couple of years uh, we are coming up uh, i mean I would say that even CMAP is a brand I grew up with. So I, I, uh, every time I race around the world myself, I use CMAP only. And all the professionals only use CMAP uh, those days because it was kind of the cartography. It was the truth. We called it the truth. And we always say that it's the only cartography that we know that everything on a CMAP chart is real. <laughs> uh, and nothing is interpolating and nothing is made up. And then later on, there's been CMAP wasn't looked after very well, I think, by its previous owner. Now we are rebuilding it. And the products we are coming with uh, for 2020 is amazing. And it's, I think that the way boaters consume cartography is going to change a lot in the next two, three years. You will get much more about only what you need and not the space you don't need. And then you'll get more frequent updates with more new and relevant information for you. And the way we will look at cartography will be completely different. Well, it's been fantastic to see just how the products have evolved yeah. and knowing that this pace of acceleration is is just going, only going to continue. So, Knut, thank you very much indeed for your time. My pleasure. Thank you so much.